Are Democrats soft on crime? We're going to talk about that. What's up, folks? Once again, it's your boy Tim, the handsome liberal, out on location, every day, all day, working for the man, as we all do. So are Democrats soft on crime? You're hearing this from Trump. You're hearing this from Republicans. You're hearing it in local and uh, down ballot elections as well. And right now under President Joe Biden, it's hard to deny that um, crime is going up in big cities all across America. And that would include um, a lot of police that are losing their lives in the line of duty. So there's no denying that crime is going up. But we have to ask the question, is it due to Democratic policies? And if so, why? Uh, did Democrats just wake up one day and say, we're going to allow criminals to do whatever the hell they want? Or did it just happen in a vacuum? Or are there reasons behind it? That's what we're going to speak of today. Are Democrats soft on crime? That's the question I'm asking. Right now, it would appear so, particularly compared to Republican politicians, certainly with Trump trying to throw in the National Guard during his term, and you hear Republican uh, politicians all on television about what they would and wouldn't do if they were in power. But we cannot speak on them because a lot of them are not in power. They're just talking heads. But Trump was in power and he absolutely did want to send in the National Guard uh, in Portland and Chaz out there on the on the West Coast. Issues they had in Seattle when they set up an autonomous zone where the police could not go into and they just kind of ran things. So. Those are Democratic cities, and Trump was a Republican president, and he was trying to do things, certainly with Black Lives Matter in areas where there was rioting and looting taking place. So Democrats are softer on crime from the appearance. But why is that? Why is that so? Well, this is the part where a lot of people would not want to talk about, but I like to pride myself on saying I can see both sides of an issue. Just like here, I'm telling you that, yes, Democrats do appear to be softer on crime than Republicans, but I'm going to state a reason why. The police, the police have a lot to do with it. Now, when you hear critics of President Biden uh, give him critique, a lot of it is about the horrible policies he had in the 80s and 90s when he was very tough on crime. Same thing with Kamala Harris. A lot of the three strike laws and things like that that took place in California in the 80s and 90s. The critics today of Joe Biden bring that up. Well, they were liberals back in the 80s and 90s as well. So clearly Democrats do, do not have a history of being soft on crime. What happened? Well, like I just said a minute ago, the police. The problem is anytime there is an extreme in one area, you have an overreaction that creates an extreme in this area. Right now, you have Democrats in different cities passing laws that are allowing everything from individuals committing moving violations to just be allowed to continue on their way. The police are being told, you know, don't pull someone over for a moving violation up to and including letting people go into a fucking Target or CVS or Walgreens and just steal a bunch of shit and run out with little... Uh, a little hope of recourse. I mean, people were stealing shit and closing down whole stores because um, the law and order has just evaporated in several democratic cities. So why the hell am I talking about the police? Well, the problem is the extremes that I mentioned during the Giuliani era, during the Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, 80s and 90s era we talked about, you had extremes in regards to over-policing. People were going to jail for three strike laws. The third strike could have been something as simple as taking a pack of cigarettes or some shit. People, there was a lot of people who received life sentences under the three strike laws where that third strike was some bullshit. There's a lot of people who received ridiculously long sentences with mandatory minimums over bullshit. And in, of course, you're seeing things nowadays with the George Floyds and some of these other um, issues where... A person is indeed committing a crime. They're certainly not complying with police, but somehow they end up dead. And it's like, well, what was the original encounter over? Well, George Floyd was passing a fake $20 bill, or you had Freddie Gray who got, uh, what was the guy that was choked out because he was selling loose cigarettes? So the reason I'm saying the police is that the, the, the response from police is so heavy-handed that you have a lot of Democrats saying that, shit, it might be better to just let the individual get away with the crime. Now, I'm not here to defend anybody. 
that's fucking committing crimes. I, I believe that the police should be allowed to do their job. However, know what the fuck your job is. And that's where the problem is. You're not out to defend egos. You're not out to force people to do things that they legally do not have a right to do. And the police do not always know that. I mean, how many videos on YouTube can you find in an hour where the police are doing shit that they don't legally have the right to do? It's The videos are is a dime a dozen. It's that many of them. So when they do this shit, it cost those taxpayers in those cities millions of dollars. I mean, you George Floyd alone, I received what he received twenty seven million dollars. Uh, Breonna Taylor or whatever her name is in Louisville, her family got eighteen million, and the list goes on and on and on. Now we could argue that these these are just thugs. They don't deserve this shit. They would have never earned that money in the course of their lives. All legitimate arguments. However, one thing that is not a legitimate argument is that they deserve to die in many of these cases. Absolutely no one, whether George Floyd was killed, died of fucking COVID or whatever, nobody is going to defend you sitting on a guy's neck for nine minutes over a, a $20 bill and him not getting in the car. So, yeah, you're going to have the taxpayers of Minneapolis looking at a $27 million judgment thinking, it might have just been better to let them get away with passing a fucking $20 bill. Now, that's where you're creating all of this, these issues. If you get trained officers who know how to do their job properly, you don't have to let anybody get away with shit. You catch somebody's shoplifting, you charge them with shoplifting. If it's more than $300, I believe that's a, a, a class C felony or whatever in most states. You do, you do your job. But it's unfortunate that a lot of police officers are showing up to these scenes and they're overdoing their job. They're, like I said, they're beating and killing people and violating rights, violating civil rights, and it's costing the city a fortune to the point where they're like, well, shit, just, just let them get away with it. And, and it's just turning into chaos. And it's happening in liberal cities because the Republican ran, the Republican administrations certainly are not going to let people get away with crime. In their areas, you have, when the police overdoes something, they just defend the police. They just say, well, the guy was a thug anyway. He kind of got what he had coming to him. And that's absolutely fucked up just as well. I mean, I, if you commit a crime now, do you want somebody killing you 20 years later and saying, well, back in 2022, you were a bad boy. It just, because they brought up every fucking thing on all of these George Floyds and Breonna Taylors and Dante Ray. They bring up all kinds of shit they did forever. None of it excludes, you know, or excuses killing the people. So that's my take on it is that as an officer, you should absolutely be allowed to do your job. But when you continue to go above and beyond and violate rights, you know, for individuals walking down the street, not committing a crime and says he doesn't have to show you his ID as a officer defending the law, you should know he has Fifth Amendment rights to not say shit. You should know that. And there's just too many cops on YouTube, on TV, on the Internet, time and time again, not knowing just the first fucking Ten, Amend Ten Amendments, the Bill of Rights. There's a lot of cops out here that just do not know that. And that leads to this shit. And then the minute you invoke your rights to a cop that does not know his rights, in his eyes, you're violating the law. And I understand that. He had, he gave you an order, even though it's a violation of your rights, he doesn't realize that. So he looks at you like you're violating the order he gave you. And then, of course, he takes it to the next level to defend an unlawful order, which thereby is now committing a second offense. And the minute the cameras and the fucking videos and shit are you know revealed to the public even a long you know first year law student is like this cop just fucked up and there are dozens of videos like that and instead of the republicans who are tougher on crime saying we need to get rid of that cop they circle the wagons and defend the cop and they do shit like pass laws that say okay look if somebody gets treated like george floyd we're gonna cap off a maximum that they can receive so Maybe if you do it in a Republican state, okay, the most his family can receive is $5 million. They got laws like that for people who have been wrongfully incarcerated. Why not just fix the shit you got wrong instead of passing laws to limit the amount of settlement claims a family can get? That just looks like you're more on the side of fucking up. So, yeah, liberals are, are soft on crime. 
And like I said, I'm not defending letting anybody get away with committing a crime. However, Republicans who are tougher on crime, that's not solving anything either. Yeah, you're you're reducing crime like Rudolph Giuliani with random stop and frisk. He reduced a lot of crime in New York. But if you want the relationship between the citizens and police, particularly minorities, to improve, randomly stopping people, which is a clear violation of their Bill of Rights or, or their civil rights, you know, unlawful search and seizures in most cases, you know, just hemming somebody up against the wall and going through their shit and they're doing nothing wrong. If you want to repair the relationship between police and the citizens, randomly stopping and frisking people is not going to be the answer to that. If you really believe that, well, if he's a good guy and he's doing nothing wrong, he won't mind me going through his pockets and searching his car in front of all of Times Square for a half hour. He'll be fine with that. I'm doing my job. Get the fuck out of here. People have to go to work. People got to go to daycare, pick up their kids. People are living their lives. They don't want to be searched by an overzealous cop for a half hour or more for some shit that they're doing nothing for. And you're crazy if you believe that a citizen is just going to be okay with that. And that's assuming it happened once. There are citizens in some of these towns that are like, look, I get stopped, you know, once a week. Or I get stopped every other fucking day. There's no way you're going to tell me that if you were getting stopped like that, I don't care how law-abiding you are, how much you pay your taxes. It's okay when it's happening to somebody else. But if that was happening to you, you wouldn't be fine with it either. So let's just be real. But that's my take on it is that the liberals are softer on crime than Republicans. But there is an unfortunate reason why. Give us some better cops. Train cops. Don't defund them because I think that's dumb as hell. You don't need to defund the police, but you certainly got to make sure you put officers out there that know the Bill of Rights, know the ten, know the first ten amendments, and they absolutely realize that our job is to improve relations with the public, not to defend egos and shit like that. You know, everybody's not going to talk to you in the sweetest of ways. You don't get to beat the shit out of somebody because he called you a pig or something like that. Get cops like that on the street. Yeah, you're going to have some criminals that are always going to be assholes. I'm fine with that. But, yeah, you don't want to make enemies out of citizens that are not committing crimes. So get better cops on the street and some of this shit would be reduced and it would free up cops to go after the people who truly deserve to be brought to justice. The shoplifters we're talking about. You know, people who are actually committing moving violations shouldn't be afraid to pull somebody over because their tail lights out. But when you pull them over, if the guy doesn't want to tell you where he's going, which by no means the law requires that, if you pull me over because my tail light's broken, now you ask me where am I headed or why am I, why am I in this neighborhood, I don't fucking have to answer that. Cops need to realize that. Always work on de-escalating the scene, even if the other guy's being an asshole. If he's not breaking any laws... Write your ticket, give him his warrant or whatever the hell you got to do and let him get the fuck out of there. There's an old video, by the way, of a guy being pulled over. I wish I could show that guy got pulled over and he was going off on the cop. Cop gave him the sweetest, sweetest conversation back. Still wrote him the ticket. The guy got so mad he tore the ticket up, threw it out the window. Cop said, now you're littered. I'm about to write you another ticket. But he was very nice about it. The angry driver got out of the car and picked up his ticket. He was cursing and everything. Cop never used one curse word back. The cop protected the law, gave out the moving violation, and did not escalate a scene when he clearly had a citizen that was cussing and calling him everything under the sun. Get more cops like that, you know, we, could, we might be to work on some. Anyway, I would love to hear your take on that. That's why I strongly believe right now it appears as if Democrats are softer on crime. It's your boy Tim, the handsome liberal. Love chatting with you. Catch you later.